like Annie said, my name is Kelly Colangelo, and I am super excited to be here this weekend with you. First, I want to tell you three things about myself and just put them all out there. I'm a huge fan of Ultimate Frisbee. Anyone? I love bacon. No vegetarian here. And I love Jesus, but not in that order. So three things about me. Uh, so I want to start with a story, and it's a story when I was a senior in high school. My friend Sue had this scathingly brilliant idea. And when it's a scathingly brilliant idea, it's bad. <laughs> so I share this story with you um, to kind of um, share about maybe um, a little about myself and a little bit about my driving abilities as a senior in high school. So it's the last class of the day, and she's like, Kelly, it's just gym class. Who needs to go to physical education? Let's just ditch. And I was like, hmm, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. And she's like, come on, Kelly. And she's like, McDonald's french fries. And I'm like, that sold me. And I was like, OK, we have to come back and do softball practice, so totally fine. So we go over to McDonald's, and I had this, like, desire to eat these salty, delicious, vegetable oil french fries. So we go to McDonald's, we get the french fries, and then we're headed back to school so we could make it to practice. And on our way back to school, just driving my car, she's in the passenger seat, we're stopped at a red light. And at that red light, I turn over, and she also turns, and there's a police car. Now, it's not a huge deal because we're two licensed drivers. Sure, we cut school. We probably could have gotten in a little trouble for that. But the problem was my dad was a police officer, and he was in that car. <laughs> yeah, it gets a little worse, but I kind of wanted to demonstrate uh, what this craziness looked like. So. If you'll allow me to be driving in my dad's, let me remind you, my dad's car, driving, Sue is over here, police car. We turn, police car, at the red light, my dad in the police car, who is a police officer. Yeah, I was pretty freaked out, and all I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be in so much trouble. And my friend, who is so, she's such a genius, I don't think he saw us. And I don't know if that like alleviated my anxiety. And I was like, well, I'm not sure. So she's like, Kelly, just look straight and lean back. And we were just praying that the light would turn green. So I'm like, Dear Jesus, please let it turn green. Please let it turn green. And it's like when you're in the car and you're kind of like ducking down because you don't want anyone to see you. And we would like look over and then like look back. Kelly, he didn't see you yet. I'm like, okay, okay. It's going to work out. It's going to work out. Look over, look back. He didn't see you. Okay, look, look over, look back. And then finally I look over and my dad is staring straight in my eyes. Now... You think that's bad, it gets a little bit worse because I, you know, I was a senior in high school. I didn't have a lot of experience driving. So in that moment of panic, thinking my dad was gonna kill me, gonna pull me over, call backup police, it would be in the newspaper. Father pulls daughter over, police, all these things. In that moment, I accidentally put my foot on the gas, and went through the red light. <laughs> and I may have peed a little, just, <laughs> just putting it out there. And I go, and my friend, who is very smart, said, well, he may have saw us now. <laughs> and I go, what do I do? She goes, quick, turn right. <laughs> so. I turn right and we head back towards school. What do you know, my dad starts to follow me. And I'm like, oh man, this is it. I'm gonna lose my license. I'm not gonna be able to drive to school. I'm gonna have to take the bus. 
Like, my life is over. So we're headed back to school, going to practice, and I'm just like super paranoid, really worried. I'm waiting for the flashers to come on. I make a left into the school parking lot, and my dad kept going. So, yeah, hashtag merciful father for you. So, um, I share that story because a lot of times in my own life, I feel like I was running from something, but in actuality, I was running from God or turning away from my Heavenly Father. So maybe you're here this weekend and you think God has got you at that red light. Like you're stopped at the red light. My question for you is how far are you going to let God chase you? Because God knows you. He doesn't know you in this creepy way or this Santa Claus way. But he knows you, he desires you, and he wants to have a deeper relationship with you. So talking about relationships, a lot of us have special relationships. I have a very special relationship that I want to share about. I've got this relationship with mint chocolate chip ice cream. Now, if you're a fan of cookie dough and you feel like that's a better flavor, we can talk after. Okay, um, I have my master's in counseling. I'm happy to give you counseling sessions if you're worried like your parents have brainwashed you about cookie dough. So I'm a firm believer that mint chocolate chip is the best ice cream flavor out there. And there was one day that I just had this craving for mint chocolate chip ice cream. So I went and I bought like three pints of Ben and Jerry's mint chocolate chip ice cream, stored it away in the freezer. A few days later, I was like, oh. I want the mint chocolate chip ice cream. So I'm digging through my freezer and I can't find it. It's like I can find the broccoli, the carrots, all this healthy stuff, but I wanted the mint chocolate chip ice cream. So I found Yoplait. It's a strawberry flavor yogurt. And I'm like, oh, I can't find the ice cream, so maybe I'll try the yogurt. So I eat the yogurt. It's creamy, it's smooth, it's similar to ice cream, like the texture, but it really doesn't satisfy the craving I had, that desire I had for mint chocolate chip ice cream. So then, in my refrigerator, I also found Ready Whip, just in like the can. So right there at my refrigerator, I take the Ready Whip out, and I just squirted a few squirts in my mouth. You guys ever do that? <laughs> so. It's sugary, it's sweet, it's delicious. But even when I was done with that, it's like I still had this desire to have the mint chocolate chip ice cream. And nothing would satisfy until I had the mint chocolate chip ice cream. So maybe you guys don't have the same desire to have mint chocolate chip ice cream, but maybe you have that desire to walk in a room or to walk in your classroom and to feel confident to feel like you're on top of the world, to feel like you belong. When I was in college, I studied abroad in Rome, Italy. And my second day in Rome, I knew no one. I did not know the language. I attempted to make it to the university. And I had to be there by 11 AM. I got on the wrong bus. And once I realized I was on the wrong bus, I got off that bus. I took another bus, but I was going in the wrong direction. And four hours later, I showed up at the university, razzled, messy, confused. I'm late. It's my second day. What am I going to do? But all I wanted was water. I was thirsty. I didn't have anything to drink. So I get to the university, and I see a vending machine. And the first thing I do, I put my new euro in the vending machine, there comes out water. I'm like, yes, I just need water. I need to get hydrated. So I take a sip of the water. And it wasn't water. Like, let me tell you, Europe water is different than water here. It was this fizz. It was this bubbly stuff. It was this mineral water that was so gross. And I was spit it out. And I was like, my thirst right now is so real. My th I could have, like, drank out of a puddle. Um, 
I could have done that. Uh, my thirst was so real, I just wanted water. Um, but the water in Italy, the water I got from the vending machine, it wasn't what I expected, and it's not what I wanted. So a lot of times relating this to my life, it's like I was searching for something. I was searching for purpose. I was searching for meaning, and I came up empty. I came up without a drink, without water. Ultimately, I was searching for God. I was searching for the living water that Enya just talked about. But it didn't satisfy me, all of those counterfeits. When I was in junior high, my friends and I, we would have these epic games of hide-and-go-seek. Maybe you think that's lame, but that's what we did where I grew up. And on the weekends, we would go to the woods, and we'd do it all up. We'd put camouflage on, uh, black on our face, and we would just play all night long. And I remember one night, I was on the hiders team, and we made a rule, every man for himself. So we weren't going to hide in like pairs or groups, we were going to hide alone. And I remember standing behind a tree, not that it was a stellar hiding spot, I'm not claiming that, but I remember standing behind a tree thinking, is anyone going to come find me? What if I'm forgotten? Did God forget me? Does God know me? And there's several lies I believed or several lies that plagued my life in junior high and high school. And one of the lies was, I'm all alone. So the voice of the accuser, the father of lies, said, Kelly, you are all alone. Kelly, you are not enough. And the reality was I had a lot of friends. I was very involved in athletics. I had a great family. I was with people all of the time. But then this voice said, Kelly, you're all alone. Kelly, you're not enough. And I was, I was searching in junior high and high school, searching for something that was real, searching for something that wasn't false, searching for truth. I encountered the living water, but before I encountered Christ, I was really searching for love, but in all of the wrong places. It's kind of like that bad country song, searching for love in all of the wrong places. So recognizing I had very unhealthy friendships, I had a very unhealthy boyfriend, very unhealthy weekend habits such as going out drinking and partying, but recognizing I had a desire for good. I had a desire for something real, something beautiful. I had a desire for the infinite. I was thirsting for something so much more than myself. I was searching for something so much more than the world. And I believed what the world told me. I believed what my friends told me. It's like, oh, just do whatever you want if that's what makes you happy. The world says, oh, just be a good person. I want to tell you, the world is crap because God does not want you to be a good person. God wants you to be a saint, and God wants me to be a saint. So God calls us to something higher. God calls us to greatness. Thomas Aquinas says that love, real love, is desiring the greatest good for another. Sometimes I think we forget that. Sometimes I think when we have that 24-7 access to our iPhones, to social media, when we have that access to pornography, when we have that access to unhealthy relationships, we forget what real love is. We forget that we were made for another world. C.S. Lewis has this great quote. Sorry, <laughs> technical difficulties. Oops. C.S. Lewis says, if I find in myself desires which nothing in this world can satisfy, the only logical explanation is that I was made for another world. 
So these desires we have, they're good. Some are physical. We need food. We need water. We need shelter. But then we have desires of our hearts. The desire to belong. The desire to be loved. The desire to feel worthy. So C.S. Lewis says, if I find in myself desires which nothing in this world can satisfy, the only logical explanation is that I was made for another world. So you and I, we're made for the mint chocolate chip ice cream. We're made for the real water, not that fizzy stuff. No offense if you like the fizzy stuff. But we're made for something better than what this world can offer. We're made for something better than the counterfeit. We're made for Christ. We're made for the living water. So many times I have thirsted. I've thirsted and come up empty because I've thirsted in the wrong places. So I want to introduce you to a Latin phrase. It's called nuke shepi. So say it with me, nuke shepi. I probably just gave you a terrible lesson in Latin. Father can correct me later. Uh, but what it means is now I begin. So I think it's very applicable to this weekend. Maybe you came because you came last year and you had this awesome time. Maybe you came because your friends were coming. Maybe you came because your mom made you come. Whatever the reason, Christ was calling you to be here. From the very beginning of time, Christ was calling you to be here today, tonight, this weekend. Nukshepi means now I begin. We can start this journey of prayer together this weekend. We can start beginning again, to have a new beginning this weekend at the Steubenville Youth Conference. So uh, I, I want to talk about how God wants to move in our life this weekend. And something that is always moving is a flame. So uh, please say a prayer that I don't light my hair on fire. Uh, but to depict this, I wanted to show you a flame to represent that it's something that is always moving, always changing, and always there, even sometimes when we don't see the flame. So this flame, and any candle, any flame is always moving. It's constantly going. Christ is always moving in your life. So maybe you think, eh, Christ, he's not for me. Christ is not there. Christ is not present. Maybe Christ is present in my friend, in the person sitting next to me on my left or right. But Christ isn't present in my life. Well, a lot of times I felt like I was the person that all of those great things happened when I was like in the room next door or all of those funny stories or those inside jokes I wasn't there like I was always absent from that is Christ really present in my life and I would ask that question a lot and I would ask the question am I alone is Christ within me well sometimes we think Christ isn't there we think this flame Christ has inside of us is not there, it's not present, it's blown out. Maybe you feel like someone put out your flame. I want to tell you that's not true. Christ, the maker of the universe, is dwelling inside of you. The universe can't contain him, but he made a dwelling place inside of us. So sometimes we think that flame is not burning inside of us. It always comes back because Christ never left us. It's just this mind game we play with ourselves. So recognizing that Christ, the light, God is light, is always there. Maybe we think we are all alone. Mm. No, we're not alone. Maybe we think we're not worthy of love. We are worthy of love. Christ looks at us with love. Christ has called you by name to be here this weekend. Christ knows you. He wants you. He desires you. He chose you. 
I dumped it in water, don't worry. <laughs> Mother Teresa, uh, towards the end of her life, she wrote a letter to her, her sisters. And she said, she talks about, I thirst. And she talks about, yes, how we have a longing and a thirst for Christ, but how Christ also has this thirst for us. So we have this longing for Christ, but Christ has a longing for us. And she encouraged all of her sisters to put their name in front of I thirst. So for example, Sister Mary Vincent, I thirst for you. And she encouraged the sisters to take that to prayer. And that's what I want to do, and that's what I want to suggest this weekend as we wrap up this time in prayer. Realizing I have a lot of wants, I have a lot of needs, I have a lot of desires, I have a lot of thirsts, but nothing this world can satisfy because God is the everlasting water. God is forever. Kelly, I thirst for you. Jesus is saying, Kelly, I thirst for you. Replace it with your name. Whatever your name is, I thirst for you. Christ is saying that to you. Kelly, I thirst for your purity. Kelly, I thirst for your freedom. Kelly, I thirst for your surrender. Christ wants us to surrender everything. Maybe there's parts of you that are hidden. Maybe you've handed over your life to Christ, but maybe there's like 10%. It's like, well, I'm not sure I want any of my friends or my youth group to see that. Christ wants that. Christ knows that, and Christ loves you. Christ is not content leaving you where you are. Christ wants to bring that to the light. So this weekend, maybe you feel like you're at the red light. You're stuck. You're not sure what to do. When you're at the red light, which way are you going to go? Are you going to go toward the light? Believing, yes, God is light. Yes, I thirst for God, and God is thirsting for me. God is desiring me. Are you going to go in another direction?